Pastor Jeff here with your Daylight Devotional, and my topic today is one of my favorite things to consider and to study, and that is mission. The mandate that we've received from the Lord, our very purpose for existence in this time, uh, this time between times, and that is missions, to be about the Father's business, to proclaim His gospel to the ends of the earth. And so I want to start today in uh, a really peculiar scripture, but a reminder from the Apostle Peter in his last letter, Second Second Peter chapter 3. And he was talking about the skepticism and the disappointment and the disillusionment of so many believers. And, uh, and because of the comments of people in the world, uh, much of which we might even agree with, uh, who've questioned things from the beginning, who don't understand the time in which we live and the chaos that, that seems to surround uh, everyone in this world. But he says in, in chapter 3 of Second Peter, starting in verse 9, uh, he said that the, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, on account of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat? But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So in other words, we live with an anticipation of a new heaven and a new earth. We live with the, with the anticipation of a of restoration of all things. That's true that there will be judgment that concludes everything in this age. And he says, he says don't, don't be disillusioned and don't be doubting and don't be skeptical. Uh, don't be disheartened because of the delay. God delays for our benefit. And if he, hadn't, if he had come in the first century, brothers and sisters... We would not even be part of this conversation. But because he has delayed these two millennia, and the, only the Lord knows when this age is coming to an end, and Peter makes it very clear that it'll be obvious because uh, everything will be transformed uh, by a new heaven and a new earth. And fire is the element by which all molecules and all creation is altered and reformed. So he's telling us, he says that uh, don't consider the God, don't consider God slow about his promise, because what's he doing? He, he's, he's working through his process for his people to choose him. And the more people that can come into his kingdom in this age is, is the fulfilling of his plan and his purpose. And I'm so glad that he's delayed as long as he has, because now I get to be a part of the very uh, promise and purpose of God. And so our promise and purpose then is to help bring others in, let them know the good news. And so I can remember back many years ago starting to wonder, well, how can I do anything to hasten the day of the Lord? Because that's what Peter says. He says, he says what, how should we live? What should we do? What sort of people ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness? In other words, this is the natural way of one who is walking with God, holy conduct and godliness. He says, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, of the day of God. And so I'm thinking, okay, what can I do to hasten the day? I don't know about you, but I'm I'm excited about God fulfilling his purpose. I'm about the new heavens and the new earth. And of course, every Christian who's ever lived, well, everyone who's ever lived from Adam on, who's looked forward in faith to God's promises, have looked forward to that time of fulfillment in him. And he has come for every one of them, as he will come for me and for you. But there's also an end to this age, which Peter is referring to here. And so he says that we can even hasten the day of his return. And I've thought about that a lot and been involved in missions now for decades. And uh, there's two things that we have we can do that are part of fulfilling this purpose uh, to hasten the day of his return. And that is prayer, intercession, standing in the gap, lifting up those who have not heard the good news, and mission, go and tell. Love God and love others and, and tell everyone, start right where you are. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to the people who are uh, that, that are part of your sphere of influence in your life. And then, of course, there's the the uh, the scripture that we refer to. I remember learning about this back in the 80s and getting really excited about closure, about finishing the job of missions, going to all the nations 
in proclaiming uh, the good news. And in, in Matthew chapter uh, 24, it says in verse 13, but the one who endures to the end, he shall be saved. Now we're talking about the end, the end of my life, but the, also the end of this age. It says, one who endures to the end, he shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for witness to all the nations, and then the end shall come. To every family on earth, to every ethnicity on earth, this gospel is going to be proclaimed. Now, I, I recently have been studying this chapter because of all the questions about the pandemic and people worrying about, is this the end of the world? And, and when you read through Matthew 24, I'm not going to teach you right now, but the context is uh, the judgment that fell, of course, on Israel, and then will end up concluding at the end of the age. But the proclamation in verse 14 is is just that. It is not a, an assignment. The assignment is a mandate. This is who we are. This is what has been handed to us to go and, and, and tell everyone, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But the, but the words that Jesus spoke at the end of this prophetic chapter of Matthew uh, was not an assignment. It was a proclamation. He said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the nations as a witness, and then the end will come. So today in our devotional, what I'd like to do is to stir up your heart to be a part of what God's doing, to cooperate and co-rule with him as we proclaim his name until he comes. So let's hasten the day of the return of the Lord. Let's hasten the day with, the, with, our, with our continued intercession for the nations, starting with our neighbors next door, and to everyone who's in our sphere of influence, that's called our oikos or our household, all those in our sphere of influence, it's not just me, my wife, us children, no four, no, uh, those four, no more, but it's all of those that God brings into our sphere of influence. And it might be those that we work with or those that we live near or those who we act, have activities with or maybe an extended family. And we pray that, like the prayer of Jabez, God, increase my sphere of influence, increase my territory so that your gospel can be proclaimed through me. I want to hasten the day of your return. I want to be about your business. So I challenge you today, remember Jesus' proclamation. It's going to happen, and he is going to come for you. He's coming for me. He's coming for all of us. But there will come a time, like Peter says, there is there is an end to this age, and God will make all things new. He's not slow about his promise. He's at work, and he invites us to participate with him, to co-rule with him in this work. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would grace us to be about your business. You would grace us, fill us with your Holy Spirit anew, and would you lead us and have your way in and through us for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name.